Hello. I hope you're good. It's pretty warm here in Cologne, in central, actually in West Germany. And we have a lot of construction going on in Cologne. That's the background sound you might hear. Well, this is a tutorial about several things. And I forgot one thing actually, which is called template. <laughs> so it's about super shapes, blend shape, soft body dynamics, N particles, and mesh networks. Enjoy. So first of all, let's introduce a few super uh, uh, bodies here, <laughs> like the spherical harmonics. Well, that's the right mouse button right here. Spherical harmonics. Uh, it is a sphere, which is quite all right. Uh, let's move it to the left and let's press the key G which repeats the last command and let's put that sphere to the right and press G again so we have a third sphere but here in the outliner you see it's called a super super shape uh, and here under in the attribute editor when you click here you can randomize it so Let's so randomize it a couple of times. I quite like this. Okay, let's put this here. Let's press G again. So we have another super shape and we randomize it again. And we press, well, we move this over here and we press G again and randomize the super shape again. So we have different kinds of super shapes here. Look at them, they're quite beautiful. Actually, these two here are a little bit similar, so let's click here again. They're even more similar now. Maybe that's a different one, yeah. Okay, so uh, basically um, we have five objects and we want to morph one into another. And the morphing tool in Maya has been around since Maya version 1.0. And it's so central at the core of this uh, program that uh, it's still the main tool to morph one facial expression into another. So it's mainly used for character animation. Uh, and the important thing is it just fails to work without error message, I guess, uh, if the topologies of the morphing uh, objects is different. So if this bot uh, object here, for example, would have two faces less than, than it has now, it would not function in, in the with the blend shapes because uh, Maya won't know how to morph uh, an object with 450 into an object uh, with 448 faces. So they have to have the same amount of faces, uh, which is called basically topology. Of course, it works with NURBS objects as well. So um, let's pick that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. The selection is important, as you'll see in a second. And now let's go to the blend shape entry. We need to be under animation because it has to do with an animation. We animate an object being like this, being to being like this. And it's a deformation because they have, well, it's a deformation, obviously. So we go to deform and blend shape. Now let's use the option box, uh, what we want is an in-betweening. If you don't switch this on here, the in-between, you get four sliders, so you can um, morph this sphere only in that sphere, in, into that object, or that object into that object, but we want to um, have just one slider uh, to move from one to the next to the next to the next. So let's apply this and reset the settings so we have a clean start next time and uh, the blend shape is right here. So that's one slider. If you hadn't chosen in between, chosen in between you would have four sliders right here. But now we have one and look what it does. It morphs one into another, one after the other. So that's um, that's nice to have. We'll delete those because we don't need them anymore. Everything sits here and is quite relaxed. Put it in the center of the scene and use that morphing thing here. Just beautiful. Um, let's scale it up. 
It's a very lean scene now. And of course it behaves just naturally. Uh, now the next thing is we want to make this soft. Uh, so we select it and now we go to FX and to N particles. I told you this tutorial covers N particle aspects as well. So N particles and soft body. Now we need the option box again and uh, the default settings are like these. Just creation options just make it soft. This doesn't uh, serve our purpose uh, now. Uh, we need to make uh, we need to create a goal. We want this object to be soft but always remembering what it where it came from, what it originally was, a sphere. Uh, and that's done by duplicate uh, make the copy soft. And we want to hide the non-soft object after the creation process has finished and we want to make the non-soft a goal. So it will be a goal and that's a goal weight. We can change this later but just for fun let's reduce it a little bit. Apply and close. Now we have a group here and under that copy of super shape 1 node um, is the particle node. That's the particles actually. And the particles don't do anything because they have no force. And um, the whole soft body dynamics system is pretty legacy in Maya but it's still that's the particle system to choose from. Uh, previously it was called particles, now it's n particles but still the soft body is based on the particle idea which is good. Uh, but it does not work with the nucleus. The nucleus uh, is created automatically but as opposed to say bifrost fluids where the nucleus provides the gravity to that object it doesn't do anything here. So that's slightly um, uh, well inconsistent I would say. We need to introduce in order to make it fall on the fields and solvers uh, the gravity here which we won't do because we are going for, well, a vortex field. The vortex field of course turns it around. You can see it wants to turn but it is um, always trying to return to the goal which is the original you know, object of course. So let's extend the, uh, the animation range here to 500 and now um, we'll do two things. The vortex field is a little bit weak. Let's increase the magnitude from 5 to say 70. That's much more funky. Very nice. Maybe a little bit too much even. And what we can also do is go to the particles. That's a very uh, important uh, thing here and here you have the goal weights and objects. It's a very important section for soft body dynamics and here you have that value which we input uh, when we created that soft body. It, the default setting is 0 0.5. Let's return uh, enter a value of uh, 0 0.5 which makes it a little bit more rigid. Actually quite a bit more rigid. Um, let's um, change the raise the value for gold smoothness, smoothness so these are the parameters to play with really interesting deformations here quite lovely actually just playing with these values maybe we reduce this from 6.6 .6 to 6 because it's such a drastic effect here really What we'll do now is we'll create a mesh network and for the mesh network we can use any kind of geometry, uh, a mesh geometry, it needs to be a polygon uh, object um, and I choose the, um, I choose the, uh, the plane. And the plane is uh, quite complicated in the default settings because it has subdivisions here and for our purpose we need a very simple plane like this. And we give it another color, right mouse click, assign a new color, and we give it a Lambert shader with a color of blue. 
so it's blue now. Uh, we change the size, make it like this maybe, very thin, and now we're ready for the mesh network. It sits here or up here. Create mesh network. Uh, I prefer this way here, but it doesn't really matter. So just click here, and immediately we have 10 instances, as they're called. Uh, they sit here in the in the scene, go, going to the to the right here. That's 10 of them, and uh, under the mesh distribute node, we have that number of 10. We'll increase that number drastically in a second, but now we want to change the distribution. It's linear, it's in one row. Let's make the distribution uh, on a mesh network. That's mesh, that's a polygon. So I get an error message down here. Uh, Please connect a mesh. Yeah, sure, we will. Accept mesh. So we put it in here, either by typing in the exact name of our mesh network or by middle mouse dragging it over here. That's the one we need. So middle mouse drag it over here and it arrives in here and it, it says mesh connected uh, to the distribute network. And now you see the blue planes are distributing 10 of them uh, on that surface. And um, now it's time to go to the original plane which is sitting in the center and it's invisible but we can scale it and you will see that the blue objects are scaling as well so they're getting smaller and smaller so we have tiny blue things here now we go back to the mesh network and increase the number of points to 1000 because mesh is famous uh, and well known for handling complex uh, things, many, many, many of them. So, um, what is happening now when we run the simulation? Of course, the mesh objects, the blue ones, stick to that surface. And now we get to the last part. And the last part is we go back to our morph, which is the blend shape. So here we have the blend shape um, and now we can animate this uh, value here and uh, we can go to say the first frame and set the value to 0 and to the end frame and set the value to 0 again, set key and here we can raise the value to 1, set key, and here we can raise the value or lower the value to 2. Just pl play with it randomly. What it does now, it morphs into the other object because the blend shape is our morph tool. So it get, mixes that vertex with the morph which is of course a very wild animation. Imagine you morph one letter into another, uh, a, a T into an F, for example. You can do all these kind of things as long as you have the same to topology. And if you play with the vortex field or other fields, you can mess the whole thing up and create a real dynamic system. So finally, I don't want to see the soft body anymore, uh, but I want to keep the animation. So and I want to sort of see what the soft body does while it uh, moves the uh, mesh objects around but uh, I don't want to render it so let's introduce a light now here a sky dome light and I render the whole scene so it renders the blue objects plus that geometry which I don't want to be uh, want to be rendered so um, let's select it it's that copy of super shape 1 which is here, it's not that one, it's that one. And here you have the object display and now you can uh, make it invisible. So you do see the particles. I think the particles won't be rendered. Well, they do actually, we can hide them as well. But now uh, when you run the simulation, you don't see the surface anymore. 
Now let's make the particles invisible. Here is the particle shape and we go again to object display and we make the particles invisible. But that makes the dynamic system inactive. So we need to turn the visibility back on in order to see that animation, but we can use it, make it a template. And that won't be rendered, but we still see it working. Now when you render the object, the particles are not there anymore. And that's all I wanted to show you today.